Hello clever people, I hope you're doing great. In this short video, we'll take a close look at test automation. We are going to talk about what it means, do we really need it, when it should be used and when it shouldn't, and the types of automated testing. At the end of the video, I'll show you how you can create your first automated test in maybe two minutes or less. So make sure to stick around. First, allow me to give you some context about software testing in general. As its name cleverly suggests, it's the process of testing software. That's how software companies can be sure that an application works as it should. Now, why do they do that? Well, it's a proven fact that shipping a broken application is almost certainly a road to angry users. And angry users means no users, so useless application. One way of making sure this doesn't happen is through manual testing. If you're already a test engineer and you're familiar with testing, bear with me for just a moment as we take these necessary steps towards introducing test automation. Well, let's begin. Meet Mark. He came up with a simple idea. Hmm, wouldn't it be nice to have an app where people upload pictures and other people can see them and comment? Let's randomly call Mark's application a phase bug. He passes that general idea to a team of people called business analysts. They produce detailed documents for each functionality, like login, picture upload, comment, and so on and so forth. They give these documents, also called specifications, to a team tasked with creating a software application based on them. This team is usually made up of developers who transform the specifications into an application and testers who make sure that the application does what it should. Testers systematically break down the specifications into smaller parts called test cases. They make sure that the application does exactly what each test case describes. When a problem is found, it's reported and fixed. That makes Mark very happy, just look at him. Naturally, he now wants to grow the application. People should be able to have friends and like each other's photos. His ideas go through the same process. Business analysts listen to him, create specifications, developers implement them, and testers make sure they are up to par. But they have more work to do this time. Testers need to check that the old functionality hasn't been broken by the new changes. Well, the test team hires a new colleague and he handles, handles this new workload, no problem. Okay, okay, that's all fine and dandy. But what happens when the process repeats and functionality starts to pile up? On top of the new functionality, test engineers always need to check that the old functionality hasn't been broken in the process. Do they need more and more test engineers each time? Where does it stop? Well, luckily, this is where automated testing comes in. Compared to manual testing, automated testing is executed automatically by a machine. And its biggest advantage? Well, it's easy to run repeatedly, it doesn't need a break, and it runs really fast compared to manual testing. How do you do automated testing? Well, you remember that testing engineers create test cases, right? That's the starting point for automated tests as well. You first need to know what you want to automate. The difference here is that instead of executing the test manually, you instruct the test tool on how to run it. This can be done either through writing code or using tools which offer user interface to do exactly that. So let's imagine we are test automation engineers at Google. I bet that one of the most important things to test in Google is that search works. So let's create a simple test case for that. Okay, so let's open uh, Google Chrome. We're testing google.com, so let's enter the address. We wanna check that the results are okay. So let's search for something. Let's say it's topic, YouTube. And we wanna click the first result to see if it actually takes us there. Each test case should have at least one verification. So in this case, we could check that. Let's say the title is correct. Test topic, YouTube. So this test passes. It probably took us around 30 seconds to run this test. Let's see how fast the test automation tool would do this. Wow, that was almost like six times faster. 
Let's see how it matches our test case. First, it went to google.com. Then it entered the search term, test topic YouTube. Then it clicked on the first result. In automated testing, verifications are called asserts. So it then asserted that the title is correct. Our testing tool is called Selenium IDE. You'll find out more exactly how to create that simple automated test at the end of this video. That doesn't mean we can completely replace manual testing. While automated tests are great at speed and repetition, they aren't very creative. You still need an experienced manual test engineer to find interesting new bugs. For example, without a human, it's almost impossible to get insights into the visual aspects of your UI, like colors, fonts, sizes, or contrast. Plus, automated tests start to lose their value if you keep on piling them. That's because as you add more and more automated tests, they start to take longer and longer, which affects their property of being fast, right? Also, a high number of tests means that more maintenance is required. Each time a functionality is changed, you also need to update the automated test that verify that functionality. Before automating a test, we need to ask ourselves, is it worth it? Will the test be repeated often enough? Will the same tests run on multiple browsers? Does the functionality test have an important business impact? Test engineers always need to keep a balance regarding what test cases to automate. On top of that, compared to manual testing, there's a lot of upfront work with test automation. It takes more time and more knowledge to instruct the test tool how to test compared to manually running it. So if you would run it only once, it would make sense to keep it manual. But if you run it repeatedly, a manual test will add up the same amount of time each time you run it. If you repeat an automated test at the same time, it doesn't add up. As it is repeated, it reaches a point where it starts paying off compared to manual testing. There are three main types of automated tests, unit tests, integration tests, and end-to-end -end tests. Let's talk about each of them. The smallest part of a software application is called a unit. For example, when you register for a website, there is a unit of code that checks your email by verifying it has an at character in it. Automated testing done at this level is called unit testing. It's usually done by whoever developed the specific unit of code, so it's usually done by developers. Multiple units like this will form a component. Any testing inside this component will also be called unit testing. A modern web application consists of lots of components like this that communicate to each other. For example, user registration, user login, or the database in which the users are saved. Testing that two or more components work together is called integration testing. If you test that when a user registers, he is added to the database, then you have an integration test. Most modern applications also have a user interface like a website or phone app. Testing that most of the components interact correctly, usually done through the user interface, is called end-to-end -end testing. Remember that automated test we've done before using Selenium? Well, that's a good example of an end-to-end -end test. You may wonder what kind of testing should you do? Well, unit tests are the smallest, quickest, and more stable tests you can have, so there should be many of them. Integration tests are less stable and take more time compared to unit tests. That's because they test more of the application, so more things can go wrong. As a rule of thumb, you should have less integration tests compared to unit tests. And you guessed it, the slowest and most unreliable of them all are end-to-end -end tests. Even so, they bring a huge amount of value, as they are the ones that are best at simulating a real user. This kind of distribution is called the test pyramid. Now, where should you place a new test? Well, a general rule of thumb is to push your test as far down the test pyramid as you can. In my experience, one of the biggest pitfalls in automation I've seen is huge amounts of end-to-end -end tests or huge amounts of integration tests for that matter. I'm talking about 6,000 integration tests that took about 12 hours to run or 1,000 end-to-end tests which took 16 hours to run on a different project. Okay. Now that you know what automated testing looks like, I challenge you to write your first automated test right now. We'll be using a codeless test automation tool called Selenium IDE. 
So Selenium ID can be installed both in Chrome or Firefox, only on Windows, sadly. But we are going to be using Google Chrome, so let's start it up. The easiest way to install is just looking for Selenium IDE Chrome extension, and the first result should be the one. Add to Chrome and add extension. It's going to be added on the top right hand side here. To view it, you can just click the extensions button and pin it here. We can start it. And the first thing we are going to do is create a new project. Enter your name here. Okay, great. So now we can actually start recording a new set of actions or a new test. We just press the small record button here. It's going to ask us for the application we are actually automating. So in our case, it's google.com. Remember, here we have to also use the HTTP column slash slash before actually writing google.com. Okay, so we can start recording. And it's going to open up a new browser window for us. And it's going to go to the address we put in. So the first thing to do is write test topic YouTube and press enter and then click on the first result and then stop the test. Now let's take a closer look at uh, Selenium ID window here. So first it has this list of steps that you have taken during the recording. And below here, you can see details about each step. So if you click on a step, it's going to display it here. You can change it however you want. Now let's run this test step by step and see exactly what it did. So I'm going to use this step over current command to run it step by step. So it opened our target URL, which was google.com. Commands in Selenium IDE have three parts, the command itself, which is an action, the target, which is what you are actioning upon, and the value, which is a supplementary parameter, which is optional for some of the commands, mand mandatory for others. So the first thing it, it did is open the Google website. Then it's gonna set the window size, which is not necessarily very important for us, but it recorded uh, the action nonetheless. The next command is type. The target, so where we are sending this command, is this element here, which is actually the search bar in Google. We can be sure about this by clicking on the command itself and clicking on this magnifying glass here. So this shows us exactly what is the target element. So it's going to type to topic YouTube into the element with this identifier. Good. Then it's going to send keys, enter into the same element. So send keys is like typing on your keyboard for Selenium IDE. And key enter is the enter key, obviously. You can use multiple uh, keys here. You can even combine keys. So it's pretty flexible. So run this command. It's going to click on uh, the element with the identifier here. So which is exactly this first element. Again, we can make sure by clicking find target in page. You can make this a test by adding a verification or you can just use Selenium for any repetitive job that you have to do like daily or maybe filling out forms or doing a proof of concept of a test. In our case, let's add a new command. So we're just going to click the next empty space here. Selenium has a big list of commands that it can work with. So in our case, we want to verify that the title is to stop it YouTube. So verifications in automated testing are called asserts. We are going to look for assert title. Here it is. And the target is the actual title we are expecting. So test topic YouTube. We can actually run this command right here without running the whole test by double clicking it. Oh, it failed. Of course, we can see why it failed in the log. And it says that actual value, the value it found in the web page did not match the value we added in the target. That's because 
Oh, I missed the capital letters here. So let's uh, run the test from top to bottom. Excellent, everything passed. Thanks for sticking to the end, guys. For further reading about automated testing, I would suggest an article by Ham Volk, who is a consultant at ThoughtWorks, called The Practical Test Pyramid. You can find the link in the description below. You'll also find the downloadable versions of some of the graphics in this video as a quick reference. If you have questions or would like to see content on a specific topic, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer. Cheers and have a good one.